when it comes to overall scaling and we're talking scaling up and scaling down because a lot of the times when people are thinking about resource optimization cost optimization etc cost optimization sometimes means scaling down to people and resource optimization means scaling up but it could actually be the opposite as well so sometimes with cost optimization guess what you need to add more and you need to spend more to make sure your environment's optimized same thing with resource optimization maybe you have to add more nodes but you may have to decrease because you're not using them what we're going to talk about in this video is we're going to do a little intro to carpenter and carpenter is a just-in-time node approach that's what they call it for scaling up and scaling down worker nodes now you'll see a lot of documentation and information around eks but recently in the past couple months or so carpenter has come out for aks and they're making a lot of different changes which we will see as well in the upcoming videos. What are we gonna talk about? Well, I'm gonna show you a little bit about Carpenter. I'm gonna show you the installation process, the setup process. But before we do that, I just wanna go back to the whole idea of Carpenter. So you're probably wondering, well, what about Cluster Autoscaler, right? What about other scaling mechanisms out there? Well, here's the thing. Conceptually, they're all doing the same thing. Scaling up worker nodes, scaling down worker nodes based on load. And that load is typically defined as CPU and memory. Now, how does that load get consumed? Well, the applications that are running on your Kubernetes cluster, so the pods that are taking up memory, CPU, they're taking up resources from those worker nodes. Therefore, the worker nodes need X amount of resources to continue working, right? So it could be the means of scaling up, it could be the means of scaling down, all depends on how your workload is ultimately running where carpenter does things is it from a performance perspective it is a bit faster and i think that is the whole appeal of carpenter outside of having something separate from you know just a cluster autoscaler it is actually faster so when i say faster i mean faster in terms of scaling up nodes and scaling them down so once the resources are no longer necessary, the nodes go away right away. And again, that's what Cluster Autoscaler is doing as well, scaling up, scaling down, but Carpenter does it a little bit faster. So if you look at the performance tests and stuff online, you'll see that Carpenter does typically beat Cluster Autoscaler. So one of the other things that we really wanna think about as well is setting limits, requests, and quotas, okay? So quotas are super important from a namespace perspective. Your namespace says, okay, I'm allowed to have X amount of memory and X amount of CPU limits. This pod can't go above X amount of memory and X amount of CPU. But the most important thing is the request. So when you set up requests for your pod, it essentially goes to the worker node and says, Hey, this is the least amount of resources that I need to run. This is the minimum. Please ensure that I at least have these. So setting up requests is very, very important and overall setting up limits, quotas, and requests, and combining that setup with something like Carpenter is super crucial to ensure that your workloads and your cluster are both performing as optimal as possible. Because remember, this is what this is all about, right? It's all a game of optimization. We wanna ensure that our application stacks are running as they should be running. Otherwise, who's gonna to wanna to use our app? So let's go ahead and look at VS Code and we're gonna see some setup. All right, so actually before we get into VS Code, I just wanna show one thing. So I do have an IAM role up here, okay? And this is gonna be the IAM role that Carpenter needs. Why? Because Carpenter is an outside service, right? It's not embedded in our EKS cluster. Therefore, we're gonna to need to give it permissions to be able to scale up and scale down nodes, to be able to add nodes and remove nodes. So I created this Carpenter policy, and as you can see, I'm just gonna scroll down here, see the actions. So you're just gonna wanna make sure you copy this, and you're gonna wanna make sure you create the same policy, okay? So once you create that policy, one more thing that I wanna show, you're gonna have your EKS cluster, and you're gonna want to copy this endpoint. All right, so let me head over to VS Code here, all right, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set up some environment variables, the cluster name, the IAM role. This is the one that I was just showing you. You're gonna wanna create your own, 
and then your cluster endpoints. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And then we're gonna run the installation via Helm, all right? So we're gonna do the Helm install. We're gonna put the installation in the Carpenter namespace. We're gonna ensure we set that service count. So again, Carpenter has the correct permissions. And then we're gonna set the cluster name, cluster endpoint, which again, we got from right here, and then the instance profile. So let's go ahead and run this. Oops, sorry about that. Let's connect to the EKS cluster actually. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll run this. Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and try to run our Helm chart again. All right, and if we just run kubectl get all namespace carpenter, I'm actually just gonna zoom out here. Let me go ahead and actually spell carpenter the right way. <laughs> and as we can see, carpenter is running. Now, the next thing that is super important is the configuration. So Carpenter comes in a two prong approach, okay? You have the installation, which we just saw with the help of the IIM role and the cluster endpoint, or the, well, really it's the control plane or the API server endpoint. And then we have the actual configuration. So we have this node pool kind or object coming from the Carpenter API. And what it does is it allows us to set these configurations for what we want Carpenter to manage, okay? So things like the OS, the capacity type, the series, so is it an A series, an M series, and then the generation of the instance, okay? And then we can also set here some limits. We can set up when things are gonna expire. And then if we scroll down, we can set up the EC2 node class, okay? So this is gonna be the actual configuration of the node that's running, right? So let's go ahead and run this. And actually one of the things that we'll have to do before we do the actual installation or the actual configuration is run these CRDs. I actually just tried it and I wasn't able to do it without these CRDs. So now what we can do is we can run this configuration here. All right, and we can see that configuration now exists. So our node pools for these types, these instance types are now configured and our node class is configured. So that's what you can use to get started with Carpenter. Thanks so much for watching.